Hello ladies, I'm Dr. Cherisha. I'm a gynecologist practicing for the last 30 years. And in my 30 years of practice, what I've been seeing is suddenly there's a mushrooming of a lot of PCOS. We never saw so many cases of PCOS in my early years of practice and now suddenly there's so many of them. And some of the reasons I feel are basically the changing lifestyles. Many young girls ask me to tell them what really PCOS means. And I always say that PCOS is uh, like a typical elephant whom the five blind men went to see. Anyone who picked up a certain organ felt it's like the leg, the other one felt it's like the trunk, the other one felt like it's the tail, and so on and so forth. Basically, when you talk about PCOS, what are the symptoms that you're going to be feeling? At the young age of 15 or 14 or 16, when you want to look your best and you want to put your best feet forward, suddenly you find that you've got a lot of acne on your face. You suddenly find that hair, which you never thought would sprout at such places as sprouting. You've got a little moosh, you've got a little beard perhaps. <clears throat> you also find that you're just putting on weight like nobody's business. And uh, you also find that your periods are irregular. Now, all of this can be really damaging to the self-esteem, specifically when you're younger. And you kind of start blaming the environment, your college, your friends, your doctors, your mother, everyone under the sun, never realizing that perhaps you are the one who actually started it. Now, why does anyone get PCOS is the question. Everybody who develops or starts a lifestyle change is very prone to developing PCOS. One of the biggest PCOS uh, kind of starters that I have seen in my practice is when you get your ninth and 10th exams. That's the time you sit, you read, you don't have any physical activity, and out of love and affection, you are fed with lots and lots of goodies. Whatever you crave for suddenly at 12 midnight, whatever has got to you, you eat, you have no concept of what you're eating, you're going high on chocolates and fizzy drinks and whatever. And suddenly one fine day you get up and say, oh my God, my dress doesn't fit. Oh my God, my face is out in a break. And so that's the beginning of your PCOS. What they found is that girls who've been absolutely normal for as long as ever, suddenly after they finish their 10th, suddenly find they're down with PCOS and they start the rise in weight. It just goes on and on and on. And then comes the decrease in self-esteem, decrease in your own self-confidence and that's the time you start looking for answers. You have to view your PCOS like a chakra view. It's absolutely like Abhimanyu's chakra view. It has to be cut at four places and the four places with this which I explain to my young girls is number one is your diet. Diet plays a great role. Diet has to be nutritious, it has to be frequent, it has to be small, and it's surprising that your stomach is like an elastic bag that you have out there. The more you put in, the more you want. And it goes on. So the less you put in, the less you want. So you have to go smaller and smaller. There's a very good uh, Jain concept, wherein you're supposed to eat before seven or before sunset, and you're supposed to eat only as much as you can get into your, the two fists of your, I mean, in the two palms of your hand. Now, this concept was started years back and nutritionists are discovering it again. They found that if you keep your quantity small, naturally your calories are smaller and naturally you eat less. It doesn't matter if you eat every three hours. In fact, it's good if you eat every three hours because your body knows that it's going to get food. Body is like a like a starving man. You give that starving man food every two, three hours or something, he will not steal. You don't give him food as and when he gets all the food, he's going to store it somewhere. The same happens to your body. So eat small, eat right, eat frequent. You are allowed to binge once in a while. It's not like some, <coughs> some uh, kind of a penalty or a punishment to you. It's just something to get you going. The second is your exercise. The exercise part is extremely important. The best of bodies is like a machine. The more you use the machine, the more the machine works. The less you use the machine, 
the less the machine works. Unfortunately, that's the way God made it. So if you keep your machine well-oiled, working all the time, doing some kind of an exercise, whatever you like, it could be dance, it could be gym, it could be walking, it could be uh, maybe a Zumba classes or whatever. As long as you keep the movement on, you're fine. Third, this is where the third, third indent is made into the chakrari of PCOS, that is sleep. Sleep is the most underrated of all medications and it is one of the most important of all medications. <clears throat> I'm sure most of you are aware of the fact that when you sleep, you secrete a, a, a hormone known as melatonin. It's very interesting to know how this melatonin hormone was actually uh, kind of found to be so important for the body. There was uh, <clears throat> a state in, uh, in USA wherein they found they had a sudden spurt of malignancies. And when they kind of did a demographic, uh, uh, you know, demographic uh, marking of those patients, they found that all the patients were staying, or most of the patients were actually staying next to a highway. So they started thinking, what could a highway have to do with malignancies? I mean, a highway is a highway on which the cars and the buses and the trucks move. How would a highway affect malignancies? And then they found the reason was that on that particular highway, they had very high wattage bulbs to keep the highway completely lighted throughout the night. And these were the houses which were just next to the uh, highway. And because they didn't have the dark curtains, the darkening curtains, they were simple curtains, some amount of light used to filter it. And they realized that there is a certain variation or diurnal variation to the melatonin secretion. They found that people who sleep on time actually start secreting melatonin after they've gone into rapid eye sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, which actually happens two to three hours after you go to sleep. So say you go to sleep at 10, 10 p.m., your rapid eye movement would be somewhere at 1, and that's the time your melatonin will start getting secreted. But the caveat to this is the melatonin pigment, melatonin hormone, melatonin hormone stops production as soon as the first ray of sunlight comes. So whatever time you sleep, to whatever time you get up, is the small little you know, window period you have in which your melatonin is going to be formed. So if you keep that window small, like you sleep at 2 o'clock, your rapid eye movement comes at about 4 or 5. By 5.30 or 6, the first ray of sunlight comes, so you actually have only half an hour of melatonin. And that is why you're going to look and look ugly, feel ugly, feel drowsy, you'll find that your uh, body's ability to recover from any kind of stress is much, much lowered. And that is also one of the reasons that they found that if the melatonin secretion is less, a PCOS patient becomes worse day by day. And of course, last but not least is the medication, which is started on you according to what are the issues that are seen. Is it just the... Uh, upsurge of your androgen hormones, it is an insulin sensitivity, is it obesity and the other factors involved and you're treated according to that. So to sum up, if you're looking and thinking of PCOS, you not only need treatment, you need advice on all the other lifestyle factors which in fact are much more important than the treatment. So just the medical treatment. So it's a holistic approach and that's what I propagate for my PCOS patients and that's what we do here for PCOS patients. Thank you.